Right, we'll get started. Hi everyone, um, I'm delighted to welcome you today to today's lunchtime webinar in partnership with Leeds Arts Health and Wellbeing Network. I'm Rachel, I'm a Digital Inclusion Coordinator on the 100% Digital Leads Programme. I'm just going to run through some housekeeping before we get started. So during the webinar, if you've got any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Um, ask the speakers any questions you would like. Please use the Q&A function to submit a question to the panel. Answers will be circulated by email following the session. And if possible, Amy from the team is in the background today, going to be answering those questions if she can during the session. We'd love for you to use the chat function, introduce yourself, share your comments, thoughts, feedback throughout the session. Um, I can see people are already in there introducing themselves. So that's really great. It's really good to see who's attending today. Um, and we can generate some really good discussions in there um, and maybe make some connections as well. The webinar will be recorded and shared online. You aren't visible um, within the webinar. You should just be able to see us. Um, and we can't see you. The hashtag for today's webinar is hashtag DigiArtHealthLeads um, on the bottom left of this slide at the moment. Um, and we'd love for you to tweet us, share your thoughts, comments, carry on the discussion after the, um, the webinar as well. Let us know what you thought, maybe make some connections as well um, with others that have been attending. Um, so we'd love to hear from you. So that is the hashtag and we'll pick um, up the conversations after the session using that really kind of celebrating the energy for arts, health and culture across Leeds. We've got an incredible lineup of speakers today. As you can see, we've got Geraldine from Arts, Health and Wellbeing Network, Alice from Opera North Arts Together, and Sam and Brian from Crossgate and District Good Neighbours. So this webinar is going to showcase the variety of engaging and accessible ways existing groups and explore digital arts and culture together, both as a tool for improving health and well-being, but also as a motivator for those that are digitally excluded and to combat social isolation. At 100% Digital Leads, we're working to improve digital inclusion across the city, enabling people to access the internet enhances social inclusion, reductions in loneliness, and increased confidence and positive health outcomes. We know motivation is a key barrier for digital inclusion and a great approach to overcome this is to promote the benefits of being online with people, especially within the current situation. By joining a virtual group can make such a difference to people's lives at the minute. For the social aspect, to develop routine back into the everyday life and to keep mentally well and have really enjoyable experiences with others while we're going through this really hard time. COVID-19 has seen a huge amount of services adapting to deliver and offer sessions online, which is great. Virtual coffee mornings, virtual music, arts and culture sessions, and even virtual bingo. Some fantastic ways to embrace and celebrate arts and culture virtually when groups can't be together in person. We've found many people who weren't online at the start of the pandemic more inspired and engaged and interested in going online now because of these opportunities to interact with friends and other people who share similar interests on these virtual groups. Some have even said it's given them a reason to get dressed and get up in the morning. They've been so valuable and made such a difference to so many people's lives. But for some, it's what's got them through those hard times. I just wanted to say a thank you from all of us to the organisations, groups and services that have been providing and are continuing to providing these amazing virtual sessions for people in Leeds, because we know they're having such an amazing impact. I'm now thrilled to introduce our first speaker, Geraldine from Arts, Health and Wellbeing Network, who will be sharing the fantastic tools and resources available for groups to celebrate the arts with others on screen virtually. Thank you, Geraldine. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, so once again, uh, we set up this period of webinars and one of the reasons that me and Rachel were really interested in having these meetings was to think about 
how many arts and culture venues are closed and when we were planning this we didn't know how close they were going to be but in the new lockdown online is one of the ways that we can connect with each other and enjoy arts and culture together so despite the many barriers um, that we have to enjoy in the arts we're hoping that these webinars will start to dismantle some of those barriers and give people new ideas of how to build on the innovations and the good practice that we have in Leeds. So in our previous sessions, um, as part of opening uh, the idea of why arts and culture can benefit health, we touched on the five ways to well-being um, and how those might apply to arts by giving us opportunities to connect to learn um, very small skills, but sometimes much bigger and lifelong skills, to become active um, through games and playful activities, but also through dance and movement and theatre. Um, giving, so sharing our knowledge and sharing our culture and sharing what we enjoy with one another and also being in the moment. So even when we're not building skills and even when we're not connecting, we can use um, arts and culture activities just to have a little bit of respite from the difficulties that we're all facing at the moment. I also wanted to just introduce for this session some research that was undertaken a couple of years ago um, in 2019 where the BBC alongside the University College London surveyed 50,000 people about why they use creativity and they found that in that survey people described arts and creative activities as being a source of distraction and that helping people's well-being um, through that respite. But also it was a means for self-development, finding more about yourself, finding what you were capable of, and as a place for contemplation. So reflecting on uh, the situation that we're in, our past, our future. And I think all these things are really relevant for groups and organisations that may be very experienced in arts and cultural activities, or maybe trying them anew um, with new uh, groups and participants to support people into digital and to bring people together. So over the last few weeks, um, Leeds Arts Health and Wellbeing Network has been talking to its members and getting around and seeing what's going on in the community in Leeds with the help of 100% Digital Leeds. And we've put together a resource to accompany today's session. Uh, but some of the things that we've been looking at in previous sessions uh, kind of evidence-based arts and culture activities and how we're continuing those online. So I can't say for a hundred percent that we've got a strong evidence and research base for these online activities, but we hear from people the positive impact they're getting from them. And I think that'll do for now. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have that research to follow later. So that includes um, in the performing arts, we've got so many um, activities that are being tried across Leeds, like, for example, Your Space Leeds, which focuses on East and South Leeds, has been continuing Disco Tuesday sessions. So even with a small group of between four and seven people, they've been able to bring people together, listening to music um, from the present day right back to the 1970s and playing that music that gets people feeling good together, having fun and connecting and they're getting the feedback that people are experiencing what they were hoping to have. We've been talking to the Touchstone BAME Dementia Service that has been running online sessions, engaging, engaging South Asian communities and people living with dementia with music and it's been really beautiful to see the impact that that's having on connection and communication and people living better with those conditions despite isolation and we've been talking with people such as Arts Together Leeds about the creative activities that they found have worked when working with diverse groups from kind of well-being for professionals to well-being for isolated communities who are new to digital. Um, finally, we've been talking with people setting up their own book clubs. So um, Crossgates will be joining us later today talking about sort of the Good Neighbour schemes that they've been running and how they've used creative and arts activities to get people um, together. There's absolutely loads of resources that we've um, found and discovered like virtual tours of Yorkshire which can take you inside Hyde Park Cinema and Leeds Arena so we'll be sharing those links later but if anybody wants to um, share their resources and what's working for them we'd love to hear it so I'm just going to let Alice take over and tell you a little bit more about her work with Arts Together Leeds and Opera North. Thank you Alice. Great thanks Geraldine. 
Um, hi, everyone. So I'm just going to really talk about um, a couple of different types of size of events, really. Um, so the Arts Together Network normally signposts people to live events, um, but when that obviously couldn't happen as of March last year, we put money towards um, actually putting on our own creative participatory events that we offered out to the Arts Together community partners. Uh, these included things like writing workshops, blackout poetry, a zine making workshop, and what was interesting was that we were offering those to community groups to offer to their service users. So we were hoping that people had the confidence to brave coming along to a Zoom event where they might not know anybody at all. Perhaps they might just have heard my name. They might not know what I look like. Um, but we got people along to these things. And what we really found was the um, incredible uh, sort of confidence boost that it had for people. You know, they, they would arrive on this Zoom situation and uh, it was so important to make it feel a safe space, intimate, um, uh, supportive. And I'll just talk about one particular workshop. We had some kindness writing workshops where it was over six weeks and we learned all uh, lovely, helpful techniques of writing where you used sensory uh, things to make your writing lift off the page, that kind of thing. And we had an older woman uh, join in who found the tech a little bit tricky to start with, but she made it, she came and, uh, she really enjoyed it. She did some writing, she shared it with us. Uh, she told us a bit about her life story and it was just such a beautiful experience. And just from her, it led to everyone else being a little bit more open about sharing. And uh, she, she sent some lovely feedback. She said she really enjoyed the hour. I feel so much better for taking part. I'm so looking forward to next, next week. And uh, interesting, at the end of the workshops, um, we had a sharing session with another group. Uh, so there were 12 of us. And a few people had said they didn't want to read, they were just gonna watch and listen, be the audience. But by listening to other people reading, they eventually, of course, said, I want to read my piece. So all of us had shared, you know, these quite intimate poems that we'd written about the experience of lockdown, a lot of them. And uh, there were, it was a beautifully um, sharing and, and confidence building session. Uh, so that's just uh, an illustration of the Arts Together thing. Loads of our Arts Together partners are doing incredible um, arts, arts activities online. But I'll just talk now from the Opera North perspective that we've been lucky enough to put on two larger events. Well, we've put on several, but I'm going to talk about just two. We had um, a Carols for Care Homes webinar just before Christmas. Uh, and the participatory aspect was it was it was a webinar, but people were sent the song lyrics in advance. We pre-recorded videos of the chorus singing the carols and then we introduced them. So we had the conductor, we had myself and two people from the chorus and they chatted about what they love about the carol or how it felt to record it and how much they've missed singing together. We, we did dedications for special birthdays for people in care homes who'd sent them in to us. Um, and so I thought that was the key to that one being a success. Again, making it really friendly and welcoming. Um, and then just one last project uh, that Opera North has been doing is uh, our Couch to Chorus series which has been hugely popular. There was one in the summer, a festive edition, and we were about to start another one for the spring. It gives people the chance to come and sing together and people are really missing their choirs, which are really important for people's well-being, and particularly an older sort of demographic. We've had on average 2000 participants come to these and they're divided into the four voice types, uh, but they're on mute, but they could see each other on a Zoom session and they're muted, but they listen to Jenny, the really, really engaging uh, chorus, uh, workshop provider and she's playing the, the music on the keyboard and then also you get the chance to sing along with the Opera North chorus because she'll play a video then of the chorus who've recorded themselves on their phones and it's been mixed together on a video uh, so you actually get the feeling that you're singing along with the chorus. 90% uh, of people said it improved their feeling of well-being understandably, 50% had never engaged with Opera North before they're trying something different um, People said they loved it, they opened up the world of opera, something they didn't know about. So if you're thinking of starting something, you know, look at those key things that you do that people don't know about and they really want to, to see. I know everyone's doing that already. Uh, but some feedback from people who came along to the Couch Chorus. It's been a beacon in these difficult times to have an appointment to meet with other people and do something so uplifting. And another one, the ability to sing on Zoom without worrying if you hit a wrong note or put off a colleague is liberating and relaxing. So really, I just want to finish, I guess, by saying my top tips, um, just from being involved in quite a lot of uh, participatory arts activity, just making it warm and welcoming and accessible is, is absolutely paramount. There's something a bit nerve wracking about logging onto a Zoom. You don't know who's in the room. You might be unsure of the tech. 
Um, so, you know, ask people ahead of time. It's the language you use in your invitation. Ask people if they have any access needs that you can then accommodate, um, you know, tell people to get in touch. Demystify what you're offering. So for the next Couch to Chorus, we're going to make a special video sort of explaining what the voice types are. So if people are put off by the sopra soprano, alto, tenor, bass type thing, we'll just say if you've got a high voice or that type of thing, uh, remind people they're on mute all the time in case they think their singing will be heard remind them they don't have to read music you know it, it, all the lyrics will be there on the screen um another thing i'm sure everyone knows this but you know perhaps explain some of the features of zoom if you're using zoom or ask the group how proficient they are if it's a small enough group what devices they're on we all know these days people are on phones or ipads they're sharing computers around the house uh, always remind people it's fine if they don't want to speak or have to turn off their camera you know you don't know their situation and then having um just remember, uh, yeah, my final point really, remember people are logging on, I think, mainly as a way to see other people and, and communicate. And just doing that arts activity gives you that shared activity, that shared interest, uh, something to com concentrate on, be a bit mindful for a while. And then the joy of sharing something that at the end of the session and uh, the confidence and the sense of achievement that that builds is um, amazing. So that's all I wanted to say really today. Thanks for listening. If you want to get in touch, um, um, I'd love to be in touch with anybody and check out the online events that Geraldine list, uh, mentioned on artstogetherleads.co.uk. They're not just Leeds based, they're all online so anyone can access any of them. Thank you very much. Oh, and next I would like to introduce Sam and Brian from Crossgates Good Neighbours. Thank you, Alice. Um, I'm Samantha Hager and I'm from Cross Gates and District Good Neighbours and we've just come on today to talk about the virtual activities that we've been running. Um, I've just got a few pictures to show you as we um, go through the presentation so I'll just bring those up for you now. Um, hopefully you can, you should all be able to see those. So yeah, we, we started our daily virtual programme of activities back in March last year and it was important for us to include arts and culture in there, just to give a wide variety of um, activities to people um, that they could come along and learn something or have new activities to try. And um, these are just a few photos from just some of the Zoom sessions that we did. Um, we had people from the East Least Historical Society that came on and did talks for us um, every week about numerous things around the area, past and present. So we learned so much from those, from those talks that were um, given. We're really lucky to have them on board. Um, we also had um, the, uh, somebody came on from the Yorkshire and did talk about the Yorkshire battlefields, which was really good. Josh Flint from the libraries came on and did that. And um, we were really lucky to have a wide variety of speakers. Um, coming on. We had another talk about the East Leeds then and now, so comparing photographs from the old to the new um, in the area, just to see how it used to look before, which was really good. Um, this was one of our art sessions, so our art teacher, Amanda Brown, she's figured out how to set a camera up, so she does a demonstration for people. Um, they come on, they watch what she's doing, then they go off Zoom for an hour, um, paint whatever it is they're painting. In this case, they were painting on wood. Um, you can see some of the close-ups here um, on wood that they were doing. And what we do is we put the kits together for them. Um, they get four weeks worth of um, activities to paint. We deliver that out to the group. They pay £10 for the kit, and then they've got everything that they need to join in on the session. And it's this art class was really popular when we used to run it in centre, so it's been great that we've been able to offer this online to our members so they can re-engage and enjoy the um, art that they used to do. And um, yes, yeah, some, some of their creations are great. You'll see them on our Facebook page. We're, we're always putting them on there for people to look at. Um, so yeah, we've also had um, the Leeds Museums came on and did a talk. We've had a talk from the Air Ambulance as well. So as a group, we've learned a huge amount about history in the area, um, which has been fantastic. Um, our recent addition has been our book club. Um, we, I put this on in the second lockdown, uh, mainly because um, the, a lot of the regular members on Zoom, they'd been through all lockdown uh, last year, a lockdown eased, and it's been really hard going back into lockdown again this time, for, 
particularly for our members to have to do it all again because so many of them were shielding before so we decided we needed to put a new group on for them and a book club was something that we hadn't tried before and a couple of reasons that we chose this activity was um, really to encourage members to come back to reading if they'd got out of reading in lockdown and also to um, maybe get people to read books that they wouldn't have read before because we asked people to come on uh, with an open mind and, and we actually chose the book for them. We didn't have time to kind of ask people what they wanted to read. Um, so as you can see, we chose the Thursday Murder Club, which is about a group of four um, older people that are living in a retirement group who are all coming together to solve murders each week. Um, we've, got, we've got 15 members on the group. They all received a book um, that was delivered with some chocolates and a reading guide as well. Um, what's great about the book group is um, they not only come on, come on each week and take part in discussion, but it gives them something to do in the week in between. So they know how many chapters to read each day. Um, and they're also making notes as well and getting deeper into the book than they would before. And one of the things that we've found that really comes out of this is that reading quite often, it's a solitary activity. You read a book on your own, but generally there's nobody else reading the book at the same time as you. So it, it's really, really great that they can come on and um, join in and, um, and, and also discuss that book with other people on the call. Um, so one of our members, I'll hand over to um, Brian, who is one of our members, is is joined in many of our virtual activities, haven't you, Brian? And also a member of the book club as well. Um, and I know you've been with us right back from March last year, Brian. So I'll hand over to you. <laughs> Hi, Brian Sugden. Um, first of all, I've got to apologize because I'm not tech savvy enough to turn myself off and then turn myself back on again. Uh, so I apologize for that. Um, in January 1st, 2020, my wife died of mixed dementia. And initially, I was getting plenty of support from family, from church, from Crossgate's Good Neighbours, from Garforth Net. But then, of course, COVID came in and put the block on that. Um, and so for a while, I was a bit lost. But uh, Crossgate's Good Neighbours then started doing these Zoom events with coffee mornings, with quizzes. Uh, as Sam said, with all these talks, um, one of the good things I think that came out of it was that um, after the initial few quizzes, several of us volunteered to create the quizzes ourselves. So it became it became a creative uh, activity for us as well. Um, one of the big things I like about it is that um, I've seen all these little faces on, on, on Zoom um, and I've become friends with them, people that I've, I've never met before. Um, I'm now, I've now got friends that I've never actually physically met. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, another of the things that COVID did, speaking sort of creatively, um, a friend of mine and myself were due to start uh, entertaining him playing the piano, me singing. And we just about got ready to start when COVID came in and, and put the block on that. Um, I'm managing to fill that gap a little bit by being part of a space to sing group, which is based at the old fire station uh, on, on York Road. Um, so we sort of get together every Thursday on Zoom and uh, and sing, but we <laughs> everybody else is muted. And it becomes a real cacophony if you try to... Uh, if you try to, we tried one, didn't we, Sam? We tried to, uh, in the early days, we start, tried to start a, a sing song going, but uh, it was just, in fact, I mentioned it in a poem that I'm going to read a bit later on. <laughs> um, one of the things, again, speaking creatively, um, because Audrey died from uh, mixed dementia, I've produced a book of bits and pieces that I've written through the years. Um, to raise money for Alzheimer's research. Uh, there's stuff in there that's intended to be funny. There's stuff in there that um, is probably a bit emotional because it, it, I wrote stuff about when I was caring for Audrey and, and, and since she died. Um, but one of the things I've got in here, I wrote right at the beginning when uh, 
when the coronavirus first struck. It's part. It's in the book, and I've been I've been asked if I'll if I'll finish it off finish off with it this afternoon. I called it coronavirus. You can't go out. You must stay in. Just sit there on the rug. If you go mix with other folk, you might just catch this bug. Coronavirus, I think it's called. It's generating fear. But I refuse to be scared by what sounds like dirt cheap beer. You sit in house and gaze outside. You're starting to go potty. And as, like, as you look outside, you think, my garden looks real grotty. So out you go to tidy it, and then you take a stroll. If you encounter anyone, you need a bargeman's ball. I thank my stars for internet. At least there I can talk with other folk right there on screen, 10 tiny little folk. We tried to sing, oh, what a laugh we had when we were trying. You'd have thought a load of cats and dogs were slowly dying. But we'll come through this awful thing, our queen says so and all. We'll have street parties and the like. We'll really have a ball. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks so much, Brian. That's fantastic. Um, Brian, um, I don't know if you mentioned it earlier, but how can people get copies of the book? Just in case. Uh, you sorry, know. yes. Um, Crossgate's Good Neighbours have been good enough to hold a stock of the books and uh, they can be obtained from there. Uh, they're also looking after the finances for me because um, it wouldn't be right for me just uh, taking money through my own account to, to send on it. It's obviously open to fraud in that situation. So Crossgates are all, good neighbours are also looking after the, the financial aspect for me. Um, but you can, you can obtain books from there. I've also sent some down to Alzheimer's Research. Um, I think the idea is they're going to put them on their website and you probably get them from their fulfilment house as well. But certainly there is a stop at Crossgates Good Neighbours and you can get them from there. And every penny, I managed to, a firm that I used to work for put it together for me, shaped it all up for me, and I managed to persuade two different organisations to pay for the printing. So it's not cost a penny to produce, and every penny will go to Alzheimer's research. Uh, that's me on the back there. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to pop, pop a link in the chat as well. Um, just Brian's, um, with the support of Lippy People in Leeds, put together a video just to talk through the inspiration behind the book um, and um, the journey. So yeah, I've just popped the link in there. It's a lovely video. Um, and do get in touch with Crossgate's Good Neighbours if you would like a copy of the book and, and donate that money to Alzheimer's Society. So that's amazing. Um, I'm just going to check the q and I think most of our um, questions today have been answered. So thanks for everyone that has asked questions. And interacted with the speakers today and lots of interaction in the chat as well um so if you can see there brian lots of people saying um what a lovely poem people are laughing out loud at home and i think that's just definitely what that poem's done when you wrote that to, to bring some real joy and enjoyment um to the end of our webinar and to all of us at this current time as well so thank you um and that brings us to the close of today's webinar um our series of three webinars that we've delivered in partnership with Geraldine at Leeds Arts and Health and Wellbeing um, Network. We've absolutely loved delivering these three webinars. Great to see a, a real range of speakers and attendants as well from all different organisations, uh, groups and services across Leeds and even further afield as well. So thank you to everyone that's attended the webinars, that's interacted, that's took part. Thank you to all the speakers today. Um, give, give them all a round of applause. Absolutely amazing to hear from everyone today thank you for giving up your time across lunchtime and sharing the amazing work that you're doing and the impact it's having as well do tweet us and said using the hashtag um, i'll just share screen and pop our contact details for all the speakers on the screen um, if you'd like to get in touch with anyone um, i'll just leave that on for a moment so that you can take that down um, the speakers are all happy to be contacted after the the session so if you've got any other Sort of comments or any questions so i want to connect with them then please do get in touch with us um, and the links for all the recorded webinars so not just today's but all of the links um we can send out through email um, and the resources lists that we've produced um in partnership with the speakers and geraldine and now 
um, going to be available shortly on um, the Leeds Art Health and Wellbeing Network website. And we'll send those also out through email um, in a link. Um, and I think that's all from all of us today. So thank you everyone for joining us. Take care, have a lovely day, um, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, bye.